Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Great. I uh, want to be sure on the restream. I'm uh, doing this also on, on YouTube today. I know I only have uh, a half hour. And I wanted to show you, I just ripped this off from uh, from internet. But you can go a million places and find this. But here is what a candlestick, if you didn't know, and I can't go into it a long time because I want to go into the specifics of how I use it. But basically, a red candlestick is if the close is lower than the open. If the close is above the open, it, it's green. I mean, that's how I use it. High price is the wick, low price is the wick on both. So just that's that's that. Now, I wanted to show you on how I use it. The problem is there are 10 million types of candlesticks. I was going to show you a cheat sheet of like 8 million of them, but really the easiest way to do it in here is this way. And that is just look at the big ones. So there's all this shop in this area. All this shop in this area. I know it seems like it's uh it seems like it's stuttering, which drives me nuts. But all I'm looking at with a lot of these is two things. Two things are my most important. Well, three. Big red candles, big green candles, and dojis. Now there's all sorts of things when it comes to these, but that's all I need. And the way we look at it, at least I look at it, is not like, is that a doji? Well, a doji is when the open and the close are sort of at the same spot. So that's why it's a narrow candle. It's an indecision candle. Now, keep in mind, a lot of times with the Fed, you get an indecision candle beforehand, which is what you're getting right now. Now, the thing is, I mean, that's a couple of days ago. It's always about the follow through. And that's still not perfect, but the follow through, because you can go all the time and say a doji means you're going up or going down. It's about the follow through. So the first thing I wanted to go over were dojis. And like I said, it's an imperfect science, but I'll show you in how I do it. So somebody in the chart patterns mastery, one of our loyal subscribers pointed out that doji in Qualcomm two days ago. So then the key is the follow through, the follow through. Well, you don't know yet which way it's going to follow through. But when you saw this, then you knew which way it was going to go. If you're in the chart patterns mastery, there's a bear flag for you. There's another bear flag. Now, we're in a big old uptrend. Don't get me wrong. And I know we're in an uptrend. But I just wanted to show you. That. So sell-offs are a little more like not as good. One way the uptrend, you look at the ATR trailing stop or you look at the 50. So a follow through is going to probably go, it could go down, but it just doesn't go down as fast as if it was in a downtrend like that back here. So there's, that's one thing. Now I talk a lot about bull and bear flags and I want to show you something within this. So here you have this. You have this little doji. So that gives you the alert that there's probably going to be a big move one way or the other. Well, you see that it broke this way and then had a bear flag. And there comes another beautiful thing. You had a doji, an indecision candle in the bear flag. So it went down. It had that rally. Let me do it with an arrow. It had that rally in here. And then the rally stopped with the indecision candle. And so that was a, a tip off that the next move, if it breaks in here, yeah, it's, it's going down. So that's another thing with the wicks. It's really tough with wicks to draw the trend lines. But I'm telling you, the tighter this, so you don't have like any panic wicks. So the tighter the wicks like that, where you can draw a defined trend line, the more reliable. But you got to wait for the break. You definitely, definitely have to wait for the break. But it's all about, it's all about the follow through. 
So now you might say, well, how about here? Well, here we go again. Yep, it followed through, but it was truncated because it was in a downtrend. It's amazing on how that works. So you had to follow through here and it wasn't sure, but at least it held. So a lot of times with candlesticks, it's about buying versus the low. So, but you see that then it got over that. If you see a candlestick in an uptrend, it's much more likely to work. But like I said, you've got to combine it with a lot of other things. At least uh, that's how I do it. You combine it with a lot of other things. So that's number one. So, but I'm always searching for dojis. And my favorite dojis are when I scan and I see a bull or a bear flag. And the end of the flag, whether it's a bull flag or a bear flag, becomes a doji. And then the follow through, one way or the other, breaks it out of a bigger pattern. So guess what? Here's one here. There you go right here. Here's a bull flag for you. And look how it ended with an indecision candle. Now you might say, well, there was an indecision candle right here but you didn't really have enough points of contact to be able to draw that. Now, this to me is not the best example because it gapped up. You had to anticipate, but that kind of idea. And it works on bullish, bearish. It's really exciting. It works on a lot of them. So just to let you know, it works on uh, in a lot of them that don't have a gap up. So just keep that in mind. So that's one way. The other way, and this is one of my favorite ones, is the dark cloud cover or the piercing pattern. What are those? Well, the first thing you're going to notice in here is you have 8 million different tiny candles. I like the big green candles and the big red candles. So now I know a lot of people talk about bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing. We like this. I'll take this right here, where you have a big green candle and a red candle takes back half. Right there is where you could do a short when it takes back half, and then you stop yourself at the top of the wick. That's how a lot of futures traders do it. So that's a dark cloud cover. It can end up where this entire thing engulfs the prior green. Yeah, that's a bearish engulfing pattern. But a lot of times you're missing a lot of the move. So just keep that in mind. By the way, I got to see one thing. Give me one second. Great. I have an order in for the Chart Patterns Mastery. Um, and and uh, it's 10 cents away from me uh, from redeeming myself today. So I'll I'll let you know that later. But getting back to it in here. Let's say the ES today. Was there anything to see as a futures trader, because you're trading ultra short term, that would have given you a tip off that we were going to have this little sell off? Well, heck yeah, you just saw it. All those indecision candles. And that's a 15 minute. I was doing more a five minute or a two minute for that matter. And all you do, if you went to a farther out, let's say a 15 minute, and you see all those indecision candles, it's really the follow through. It's the follow through that matters, as you see right now. So when you saw this indecision up here, it uh, it was pretty impressive. Apple, you know, has looked bad, by the way, all day. In fact, the more active a stock, the more widely followed, the more likely that candlesticks are going to work. Where is the SPX with all this? Oh, oh we have in to sell this at 270. 270. It's 255. They're killing me. So we have betting on the strike price going to 4,000. So that's the good news. The bad news is I did a poor one earlier. This made up for it. But there we go. Sold at 270. Give me a second. I have to post that. I don't I want to just stay in here, but I have a responsibility in the other rooms. 
So let me tell you, I can do it as fast as possible. Monitor. Look at that trade. Copy, paste. I just had to do that, had to do that, have a responsibility in there, and I did it. So that's a good one. But getting back to it about Apple, the like I said, the more widely followed, the more that the candlesticks work. So Apple, uh, you see it right there. Look at that on a 15-minute chart. Look at that indecision candle. So let's go to a five-minute chart. There's another, there's one of those dark cloud covers, but it was over everything. That's a little scary. But now look at this. This is a beautiful thing. You got that little sell-off and then you got the little rally followed by some indecision candles. Or this red candle took back half the green. So that's that's pretty interesting. But you can go to Apple 8 million times back here and find dojis or red reversal candles or green. So right here, there's a doji for you. And it followed through to the downside. This one didn't do much, but at least you see where to stop yourself. Now, somebody in the chart patterns mastery mentioned this. It's not perfect, but it worked. What were they doing? A big red candle that was on the Fed thing. and then. Two candles later, a big green candle to take back half. And they're like, isn't that a piercing pattern? I'm like, yeah. And sure enough, it went nuts. So it worked. That's pretty cool. So that worked. So uh, in there. So the more active, widely followed, the more that candlesticks work. So you can go into here. Like I said, you can look at every little wiggle and it'll drive you bonkers. Or you can look for the big candles. So we have found that the big red candles are more reliable than the big green. Like you see, the big green candle here did nothing. But usually when you see a big red candle, that sort of puts the lid on any rally because that's a lot of technical damage. You can find it on a million different things that you'll, uh, charts, and you'll see that. That's one of my biggest tells are the big red candles. Now, usually what happens, like I said, I'm only showing three things really. Big green candles, big red candles, and dojis. And I don't get really enough time to talk about this, but and the big green candles and the big red that a red takes back a, a green and vice versa. So those seem to work really well. So we've seen it not in Tesla this time, but let's take plug power. Yesterday they had an analyst meeting and it gapped up. Well, it hasn't been the same since. Even though the NASDAQ went bonkers, the stock just wouldn't rally. If you're long a stock like that, you got to be extremely careful. About staying in it. Because everybody thinks it's a breakout, it reverses and then that's it. Now, the other thing and a lot of people ask about volume. I hardly ever use volume because I'm telling you right now, on the SPY on the way up, Everybody talked about how it was light volume. Well, that's right. It's had light volume for months. So definitely keep that in mind. It's had light volume for months. So it don't go on volume. If I use volume, it's going to be if it's a capitulation like that. Did that day have gigantic volume? The higher the volume relative to everything else, the more likely it is a turning point. So let, let's look. Now, this is putting me on the spot because I haven't looked at this yet. Let's see. Yeah, look at that. That green candle. That was it. Yeah, that was it. That big green candle. Like 
Now, you might ask, but wasn't this high volume? Yeah, but it wasn't a big red candle. It just wasn't anything. It's the big ones I care about and the big ones on high volume, whether it's up or down. So, um, you know, definitely I hope that helps with the simplicity of it. And let me go and take off the volume. It gets distracting. There. So let's go into Tesla. Because everybody watches Tesla. That's another one. The more followed, the more likely it's going to work. So you see a little indecision candle here. It doesn't have to be a perfect doji, but look at this on a five minute. It went down, it consolidated into a doji, and then it followed through. So, I mean, dojis and big candles. There's your big green candle. This one worked for a couple of days. Why didn't it work? Because it's in a big old uptrend. If it was a choppy market, then the big red candles would work just as good as the big green in this kind of five minute thing. The real red candles I'm talking about are not like this. The real red candles are after a protracted move up. Look at that red candle. That doesn't mean a stock can't go up, but it usually means it needs to repair some damage. So it took about a week. So th those kind of things work really well. How about on the, the, and they work the opposite way as well. So now this is really cool that it's come all the way back. That's that AI revolution for you. So a lot of people want to take that out and say that was an anomaly. And if you look, then it's not a big red candle, but that's in hindsight. I don't know if you want to believe in that. But very interesting to show you that and to show how it can kibosh a rally. In Tesla, you see the indecision followed by here, but I'm telling you the verdict's still out. But if it doesn't hold here today, in this zone, yeah, it could go to fill this gap. And that brings me to something else. When you see that hit support, a lot of times you get a strong candle on the upside. But when it hits support, you really should go to a shorter term chart. And there you go. So you got to follow through up here. It's all about the big green and the big red candles. That's the way I look at it. And they they work pretty well. The best red candles are this. It's pretty cool. I have a scanner. I don't even remember how I did it. Big, big red candle, my main list. There's a big red candle for you. I don't know about that one yet. But, you know, let's see. We're actually short Lamar. So we lost one time, we made one time. So let me go to another one. Here's big red candles over five days. That doesn't work as well. You want a capitulation candle. So that's why I just care about big red and big green candles. So that's my first priority are the big ones. Because if you don't do the big ones, you will go crazy in here. I mean, just looking at like, uh, you know, there's marching soldiers and all this stuff. It works a lot better if you combine charts with it. So, and the other thing, a lot of people talk about this, that candle, that doji candle, but they're like, that's like a, um, uh, that's like a bearish doji. So I, I just don't go on that. I don't go on those kinds of bearish uh, or evening star or something like that. I go on a big reversal. And so if you get a doji like that, a massive one, yeah, it's more likely to follow through to the downside. When I see that, it just doesn't mean a lot. So that's uh, that's how I look at that part. No doubt about it. The other thing that I think is really important 
is the bearish patterns are less likely to work when a stock's in a big old uptrend. So if you want to go to an hourly, you're going to see that it's in an uptrend. That bearish candle didn't work because it's in an uptrend. I know that sounds like obvious, but it is. I make the mistakes all the time of trying to like say, oh, that's a reversal instead of looking at the big picture that it's uh, that it's in an uptrend. So like this. Yeah, these look like low red reversal candles, but go and look at Caterpillar on a daily and it's a monster. So that's why you got to be real careful uh, of looking for reversal patterns when it comes to that. So uh, in there. So now, what do you do now? Let's say you're a real-time trader. I mean, you know, a futures trader. Is this telling you anything when it comes to candlesticks? Not really. Really choppy. With charts? Well, maybe it sold off to resistance. Maybe. Yeah, it sold off to resistance. But when it comes to if you just want to use candlesticks, there's nothing in here really. The bear flag was more important right there. But with all of this, it just doesn't tell you anything. And like I said, I like to combine it with charts and support and resistance. You see the resistance. All of these prior bottoms now become resistance. Now it's, it's an imperfect science. So, but because you're not sure where to draw that trend line. But I think you can see all the areas. It's an area. So that's uh, that works pretty well. But it's really the candles that are the big ones that matter. There. This is just on daily. There you go. Follow through to the downside. So how about these? They didn't do a thing. You could say it followed through, but really it was choppy. This one was more dramatic because that wick was up here. These didn't tell me a thing. So you got to be picky on these. And if you miss it, that happens. Second thing, there's a little bear flag and it stopped with dojis and then it followed through. So I like using them when I see a big wick up or down, big wick. I'd like the wick a little bigger. Or if you have a consolidation pattern that then resolves itself as just a doji. So that's uh, that's how I use these. I sure wish I could go on a long time with these, but I'll show you more of them because this also is a big deal. About reversal candles. This is a weekly. Almost every single sell-off last year, keep in mind this is in a downtrend. Almost every single sell-off last year after a recovery rally ended in a, in a doji or a reversal candle. Almost every single one. So that one, that one, that one. And then you might be like, well, why didn't this one work? Well, now it's over the uh, 50. This one wasn't much of an indecision. So it was that one, that one, and that one. So it's pretty interesting that those work. Now, you might say, well, how about over here? It's the opposite. They're in an uptrend. So if I take all of this off, except this ATR trailing stop, There. Now you can see it a lot clearer. And the other thing, and everybody asks about this, well, there's all this bullishness over there and the put call ratio is, is, you know, bad and all that. You know, it's too many call buying. I agree. Totally agree. Time to hedge. 
probably just hedge. But you don't see a red reversal candle. So that's, and that be, comes to another thing. You see it here. You see it here. What happens is if all of a sudden you see it here and it takes back half of this on a weekly, most people are going to give up and say, I missed the move. When really that's probably just the beginning. I mean, nothing in there looks bad. I mean, that doesn't mean I'm bullish. Don't get me wrong. I see a lot of warning signs, but you might as well play the speculative stocks and that's what we've been doing. And it definitely works better, the bullish idea is when it's over these, when it's over the ATR trailing stop or the 50. So that's when they, they're they more likely to work. It's all probability, but consolidation patterns are more likely to work on the upside. Reversal pattern, yeah, it was good for a little. It just didn't have the, the big crash like everybody thought. And that's where you got to combine support and resistance as well. And definitely, if you're going to trade the SPY ultra short term, It's so tough to believe these indecision candles and think you're going down until you decisively get under that. So then you're like, but that's so far away. Yeah, then I go to a shorter term chart. Now you're getting a little indecision. So then I go to even a shorter term chart. Oh, that's what I'm watching today. So when I'm not on, that's what I'm watching. I'm watching this red candle, this green trying to take it back. And it's just sort of stuck in this zone right now. Like you mentioned, there's a lot of rebalancing happening. Are you talking about for this uh, for tomorrow or the end of the month? But here you go. If you're a futures trader, what would you be doing in here? You'd buy when the green took back half the red. Now that's a tiny move. That's a tiny move. But the whole point is that's where you could buy versus the low. So that's, I mean, that's how at least futures traders work. And, and now you see exactly why I had to post that SPX exit. As now that thing's back to $1.80. So in here, but the ES today, if you're a one minute trader or let's say a two minute trader, let's make it easier. This is too choppy to use the uh, the candles. I just don't see it. Here, yeah, maybe a little and there, but this, as long as you make higher highs with these candles, you can always buy here versus the low. Or you could buy here with a stop at the middle of the candle. I mean, so that's uh, that's how I use them. Now, keep in mind, though, I'll use them with small stocks, too. Now, I don't see it here. But that kind of thing is what I do. So, unfortunately, I have to go. I hope this was a little enlightening. But definitely it's dojis, the follow through with dojis. If you're in an uptrend or downtrend and big red candles and big green candles. So I hope you've enjoyed that and have a great weekend if I don't talk to you tomorrow. So take care.